Hi readers, I'm Trisha Morris from Club Scrap and welcome to the Bookworm Workshop. Very excited about this special release kit we have here to celebrate our love of all things literary. And I've got my instructions handy here and of course the Bookworm Kit, which is kind of a mashup of past literary style, book lover style kits we've done. And I just love how it turned out. Um, for now, before we get started with all this wonderful embellishing, we are going to be doing some trimming of our paper. So I'll go ahead and set aside all the fun goodies we found for this collection. And here I've got the centerpiece of the kit, that paper. And to begin, we'll just put the paper in the order in which we'll be working with it. Uh, sitting on my work surface here, I have my Fisker's guillotine trimmer, as well as my accordion pocket file. This helps me stay organized. And it also utilizes the vertical space that I have plenty of. And then each of the four pockets will eventually contain everything needed to complete a double page spread times four. So we are gonna make those eight pages together. Now, here we go. Let's take uh, one of the clock prints. Now that's gonna be the, in my pile, the second one, and, and it has the two clocks in that gorgeous academic style hallway there. So I'm gonna take one of these and then I'll take that print and put it face down on my work surface. The rest of the papers I like to have upright as I'm searching through them, it's a little easier to see. Then take one library print, recalling this. This is the one with the bookshelves and then the ladder right there. I'll put that face down on my work surface again. Now find one sheet of the gold. It's pretty easy to identify in here. There's the gold. It is gold on both sides, so you don't have to worry about that. One sheet of this gorgeous blue. It's a nice heavy weighted paper. Now we have a, a sheet called the taupe pattern. Now what is that? Well, it's really kind of more of a, a ivory tone, but you can see this very subtle pattern in the sheet and that carries through to both sides. And I want you to find both of those. So there should be two sheets of the taupe pattern. Next, two sheets of burgundy. We'll cut both of those. And then toward the bottom of your stack, you should find a sheet of cut aparts. It's lots of different images on one piece, primarily in that burgundy gold tone. And then a sheet of cut aparts that are primarily navy and gold. Then let's find two sheets of brown. Now we haven't uh, grabbed that color yet, and here it is. This is what we're looking for here. It's a nice rich shade of brown. And then two sheets of green. This one has a nice linen-like texture. I'm going to put that, well, I think it's kind of coming through to both sides quite equally. So it doesn't really matter how you place that on the pile. Now we're going to find the other sheet of the blue and the clock print face down. The remaining library print face down. And your last piece should be gold. If you miss something in there, you know, go back and resort it out. It's just, this is a great fail-safe way to do the trimming so we don't have unexpected color mix-ups and errors. Ever since I started sorting the paper first, it always goes a little more smoothly. Let's begin trimming. And very quickly for my newbies in the house, uh, when you do use this trimmer, always make sure your paper is resting firmly at the top. Be aware that the first row of numbers are centimeters. These are the inches that we'll be using together today. Now the first measurement we need is eight and a half. So when you find that, I usually look for the whole number first, so eight, and then I go to the left to add more length, right? So every column on the trimmer here represents a quarter inch, so eight and a half. I need to go two columns to the left. So there's eight, eight and a quarter, eight and a half, check for a stability level up here. Now finally, the last thing, for every cut, I want you to hold down on this clear bar and then allow the paper to just stay where it lands. Lift the blade, we're gonna move to four and a half. So again, hole number four, go left to grow the number to four and a half. That's all there is to it. Now this piece, we're gonna pick it up and place it in pocket seven and eight. And since this piece is so wide, it's as wide as my uh, organizer here. I always like to put it in at an angle so I can still see those numbers on the left. Don't try to jam it down in there. You won't be able to identify the pocket anymore. The next strip that fell, we're going to just trim it in half at six inches and stack those two pieces, seven and eight again. Finally, this last strip will trim horizontally at 11 and a quarter. 
seven and a half, and three and three quarters. That should have given you three pieces that are the same size. They're rectangles going in seven and eight again. And there is this little piece right here. Guess where that goes? Also pocket seven and eight. <laughs> now we move on to the library print. Our first number here is a nine and a half. So nine, go left, two columns to get nine and a half. We're cutting off the ladder here. And then down to three inches. Just make sure the paper is level as can be up here. Let's rotate the three inch piece so it's horizontal. Let's trim at 10, eight, six, and all the way down to three. Notice again, I let that paper just pile up. The piece in the base of your trimmer and the very next one in the stack should be the same size. Those squares go in pocket three and four. I'll pick up the remaining smaller rectangles. They're all the same size. Put one of them in pocket one and two, the next in five and six, and the last in seven and eight. This larger piece and the remaining narrower piece both are used in layouts five and six. So once again, I'll place them in the pocket at an angle. We've accomplished both of these trimming diagrams. So now I'm moving on to page two in my instructions where we're gonna take one sheet of gold that's next in our pile, which again is so handy. We'd have it all sorted out ahead of time. Let's find 10 and a quarter. So 10 and a quarter. Stabilize, eight and a half, and four and a quarter, all the way down here. Take both of the strips that you created that are the same, stack them neatly together, and trim at six, making sure you stabilize, especially for two sheets at a time. You created four the same, all going into pocket three and four. And you also have these two strips going into three and four. And we've arrived at our blue. A lot more cuts this time. We'll start out at 11 and three quarters, way over here. Now that's gonna make a really little piece. That's intentional. <laughs> then 11 and a half, another little piece. Slide all the way down to 10 and a half, 10 and a half, <laughs> then nine and a half. Last, we'll go to six and a quarter, six and one quarter. Okay, rotate the six and a quarter inch piece. We'll make a tiny cut again on a big number. 11 and three quarters, eight and a half, four and a quarter. Notice I'm still stabilizing every time. These two rectangles that are the same size, pockets seven and eight, and there's a blue rectangle. Let's trim this at five and a half, two and three quarters. This rectangle place in pocket three and four, the other one in seven and eight, and you have this little strip that's left where, believe it or not, we're gonna be using this, but it's used in two different places. So I'm gonna have you just tear it, just down the middle like that. Put one piece in pocket three and four, and the other in seven and eight. Crazy, I know. But why let it go to waste if you can use it? There was this little scrap, I regret to inform you, I didn't use it. Maybe you could find a home for this, but I'm just gonna set it aside. Now this next strip is currently three and a quarter by 12. Let's cut at eight and three quarters. And five and a half. This longer piece, pocket one and two. The other two should be squares and the same. That goes in three and four. And now we have some strips to distribute. One of the wider strips goes in seven and eight. And then all the rest of these, the skinny and the one inch piece goes in one and two. We're moving on to one sheet of the taupe pattern. Now I know that you have two set aside. So just make sure you have the single one here. First cut again is at 11 and three quarters. So a big number to make a small piece. Then 10 and a half. And six and a quarter. 
Rotate and trim at 11 and a quarter. Eight and a half. Four and a quarter. Gather up the two rectangles that are the same, five and six. Then you have another rectangle, it's pretty skinny. That goes in seven and eight. And there's a real narrow piece left, five and six. Nothing's going to waste this time, my friends. The next strip here, we're gonna trim this one at six and a quarter. Place it in pocket one and two. And then this stubbier one, it's a little shorter than the previous, that goes in five and six. And you have now a, a wide and a skinny. All of that goes in pocket seven and eight. So you see how this color is getting distributed to all the pages. Here we're gonna just trim this one at six and a quarter. Six and a quarter. Rotate. 11 and a quarter. Eight and a half. Four and a quarter. These two larger mats, pocket seven and eight. You have another skinny one going into one and two. And I am sorry to tell you, but even a piece of this size, I, I didn't use it. So I'm gonna set that aside. And now we have this larger piece here. Our first cuts at 11, seven and a half, three and three quarters. We've got two mats here, the same size, rectangles going in one and two. And then this strip here will cut at five and a half, two and three quarters. It gives me two rectangles the same size going into pocket five and six. And there is a tiny little scrap that we're not going to use. I'm sure your heart is broken. <laughs> okay, this next one, we're gonna trim it at three and three quarters. This goes in pocket seven and eight, and this one in pocket one and two. I know, it's kind of crazy. I wasn't even gonna give you those instructions, but I thought, no, you're gonna wanna know. So I just went ahead and wrote it in. Okay, one sheet of burgundy now. Make sure it's one sheet. You got your other one over here, cut at 10. Eight, this is a nice and easy one. And four. Take the two four inch strips, stack neatly, and trim at six. Two of them go in pocket seven and eight, and the other two, pocket one and two. Now you have two wide burgundy strips, pocket one and two and grab the next burgundy. We're gonna give you a lot of big numbers again. 11 and three quarters, 11 and a half, 11 and a quarter, all the way down to eight, and then five. Rotate so it's horizontal. Trim at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. That made three rectangles the same. They're all gonna go in pocket five and six. And there is a small scrap to be placed in two different pockets after you rip it in half. Five and six on the one side, and seven and eight for the other. Trim the next piece, the three by 12, at those same measurements we just used. So that's 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. Gather up the three pieces that are the same. They all go in pocket one and two. There is a small piece left over you can also add to one and two. And this next strip, the last widest one will cut at 11 and three quarters, nine and a half, seven and a quarter, five, two and a half. 
piece you just made and the one that just fell, that's the same size. The next one that just fell is a little smaller. So all three of these go in pocket five and six. The two other rectangles are split up. One goes in pocket one and two, the other in seven and eight. And then we can be sad for this little guy because he wasn't used. However, these three strips, sometimes if you lose this strip, you can't find one. It's probably under your trimmer base, just as a heads up. They all go in pocket five and six. And we've arrived at the cut aparts. There's some text on the edge edges, all four edges of the sheet that says remove paper outside of corner cutting guides. And then the guide is that little plus sign right there. So I'm gonna line up that plus sign with the edge of my blade right here in the corner. I'm just kind of looking at the upper right corner of my trimmer and doing the best I can at doing the final cuts on this cut apart and rotating trimming every side. And the reason I do this is because those large commercial trimmers don't always nail it, and we can. So now that I've removed all of those little pieces, I'm going to take myself back to this directional with that little wax seal in the lower right corner. Trim at ten and a quarter, eight and a half, seven and three quarters. Seven, five, two and a half, this first piece that you ended with, pocket three and four, the next one that says between the pages of a book, five and six, and the book stack as well, five and six. This strip with the text, one and two, just one of them. And the other one goes in seven and eight. This piece with the fleur-de-lis, one and two. And then this last one, if you look carefully, and this is the advantage to watching the video, you kind of get to preview all these things. There's some very, very faint lines here. And if you just trim on those faint lines, you're good to go. The measurements are a little weird. Um, the first one, though, is ten and a half, which works. Now we're kind of trimming in the eighths area, even the sixteenths. <laughs> so it's like, it's close to ten. It's more like ten and a sixteenth craziness. And this is more like nine and five eighths-ish. That's it. So this piece that remains with this little V at the end, one and two. And then you have imagination, five and six, wonder, one and two, and the seal, seven and eight. We get to do the runaround one more time and just do your best to see those little hash marks. They are reversed out of there in white, but with all the gold and everything, you just have to look carefully Grab your reading glasses and your good lighting and remove the perimeter of this cut apart as well. By the time you make your fourth rotation, usually you can look to the left and see the number 12 there. That's a good indicator. You're done with that. Now we have a narrow strip right here that has the cute little mouse. Let's put him on the right and cut at 10 and a half. Nine, six and a half, and four. Clearly, we're just cutting in between the pieces of art and then rotate. So, here the clock should be on your right for ten and a half, eight and a half, and six. This uh, wide open frame here and the next piece and the next piece. I have no shelf control <laughs> and a book is a gift. Uh, all of this goes in pocket three and four and some stories, one and two. The next strip will trim at nine and six. If you want, 
just bring in that little tag and clip the corner. All I do is just close an eye and line it up with the edge of the blade so I can really see the angle and match the margin that's on the other edges of the tag. Put that in pocket one and two. The teacup, I love that subtle in, that goes in seven and eight. And then the little map, one and two. Then the next strip, it's basically the same deal. So nine, six, rotate and clip those corners. Just bring that blade down, almost ready to slice. And you've got that going in seven and eight. The journaling prompt, three and four. Adventure awaits, one and two. And our last two pieces, pocket three and four. And let's just reassess our massive pile of unused pieces. That's it for eight layouts. Not bad, not bad at all. And we have these little corners. So do you, I don't know, I don't count those. <laughs> I don't think I should have to. <laughs> okay, with that finished, let's uh, get rid of the trimmer. And I'm going to support this because the trimmer isn't holding it up anymore. I'll lay it on its back and grab the pile of remaining papers. Spread them out side by side by taking the top sheet, moving it off to the right. And then the rest of the pile, not just one sheet, but all of them will be placed on your left. And here's the center of my workspace. Next, you can turn to page five of your instructions. We're looking at the image at the bottom of the page that's titled seven and eight. We're gonna work our way backwards through all of these pages and dry fit. In other words, place the pieces onto the layouts without adhesive. So this is gonna go here. What I like to do is pick everything up off the table. Do you see how, to, how it's kind of a struggle? <laughs> So if you're just dealing from your hand, you have less of a struggle when you're trying to work with this. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can distribute all of the pieces from the pocket into onto these pages. I like to start out with the big anchoring pieces, which puts us right here with this uh, strip of the clock print. And uh, right next to it, there's gonna be what I would call a paper ribbon. That's that tiny little piece we made when we cut the taupe pattern. And that's gonna transition us from this print to the plain color. Now lower left corner of this layout, I can start kind of planning my placement with these large blue mats and they get nested with some of the prints. So we have this print right here and there should be one more in there. Here we go. This uh, blue rectangle is gonna fit right into that spot and nest with this guy. So we have a lot of things here. I'm going to take these larger taupe patterns and place them vertically. So now I have horizontal spots, vertical spots, and add these burgundy mats. Then there's a um, taupe pattern rectangle. Do you see how it fits in there perfectly? And that's going to provide a little spot for my tag. Now across the middle here, just above the taupe mats, I'll add that border strip, followed by the navy or blue, and this printed text strip. Above that, we can add a row of three. They'll be horizontally positioned and nice and equally spaced. So if it doesn't fit, just rotate them so they're vertical. Your goodie pile consists of three of these little envelopes and library cards. I'm going to take one of those and place it down here in the lower right corner. And we have the burgundy mat and the print mat. And then this little guy is going to be trimmed from the piece and added to this as a little seal. If you happen to have a corner chomper, this is ideal for this next step. Otherwise, a good old fashioned corner rounder punch works great too. I'll take the white scrap that we rescued and I'm going to round it on the quarter inch setting. So again, if you look at the side, that says a quarter, and then make sure that these butterfly wings are open. And I'll repeat that for this really narrow piece of the print, just rounding those corners. And I'm going to nest this onto here. And in fact, I even had a little piece of this burgundy. Now this seems really 
sort of, I don't know, labor intensive, but this is how I ended up utilizing those darling little mini paper clips. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> you can decide which part of the clip you want facing the long loop or the short loop. I just clipped it on there. That's all I did. It's really sweet. And then I added the little book charm beneath it after tying a little waxed thread bow on there in a natural color. You can do the same thing with this navy piece as well. Just round the two corners that aren't torn and pull that little journaling card out. Now, before I finish this up, one more little thing. Um, you can take any kind of a sponge or brush and I'm using our earth ink. And one of the things you can do to sort of bring this to the same softness or earthiness as the rest of the collection would be to ink the edges of this journaling prompt. Let's just sweep some color on there. If you're using a your brush, you'll want to have a scrap paper and, and put it down onto the paper. I still go back to our old sponge applicator sometimes. Oh yes. Then taking the the little torn blue strip and all this really does it doesn't serve a purpose it doesn't have to really do anything right it just brings the eye to the item <laughs> I don't know why that makes me giggle it's just so they're so cute there you go that's pages seven and eight let's quick take a peek at that last page eight you can kind of see how everything came together there's that little wax bow here and isn't that cute how the wax seal was isolated and I attached it with foam adhesive to this stretch of the brown ribbon. Again, there's a little clipped scrap. That's all it is. And the facing page, very, very basic. The only thing I added was a punch to the top of the tag. Of course, I did remove the upper corners of this white piece. And then I punched the top of the tag with my badge holder punch in order to provide a good spot for me to tie the knot from the brown ribbon. We can just move forward by sliding the base of page seven onto eight. Take the next sheet and slide that over. And you have the foundation on which we can build layouts uh, five and six. I've got some big pieces in there, so I'll lay that down. And then dig way down deep into that pocket, making sure you have everything you need out of there you don't leave imagination behind never want to would never want to do that let's take this large piece and put it flush at the right we're going to do our same tricks again and take the latter portion of the print and making sure it's right side up and we have some ribbons to help us transition again so take the burgundy strip here and here Perhaps we should now lay down our two horizontal taupe mats. Make sure you grab the larger ones for this area. The shorter one will be here so that we can judge for ourselves where this is placed. And I even added a little transition piece of burgundy below that as well. This piece went behind, sorry forgot my order of business here. So we have this column separated by the burgundy strip. Sometimes it happens that way, you just forget. Then that goes next, followed by this one. I have a set of three of these burgundy mats and these are gonna go what I call film strip style, even spacing all the way down, a nice spot for three horizontal photos. Grab one of the library card and pocket sets. Again, you can ink that if you would like. And this gets placed in the lower right corner, followed by the burgundy and print set. Now you have the book plate in as a goodie in the kit, so I'm gonna plop that there. There's the imagination that should fit perfectly into that opening. And to, to secure this, I just put some book binding glue on this side of the window and place this on top of it and it centers up very, very nicely. That'll fit right in there and you'll attach that with the brads before you, you know, assemble that onto the, onto the uh, library card pocket. These taupe pattern pieces are placed. Wow, taupe pattern pieces are placed 
horizontally over here and I'm left with two strips. Tear off a section of that again. I guess I didn't want a torn edge, but and round the corners. You don't need to tear a new edge. And then round the corners of this one. Tear some of that off. Nest them together any way you like. And those can be clipped again. However you want. Onto the side this time is how I did it. So find your little mini paper clip and clip those on. And again, I wasn't going to include this in the instructions. I hope you don't mind. I got this detailed with it. I know some of you really do want to know the facts. You know, how did you do that? What did you do? And of course, I inked the edges of that as well. So we are left with a few little scraps that we didn't use there. The finished layouts, you can see it's all finished here. I took the green ribbon and I chain linked it, two pieces, uh, with a link at the center to avoid having a bulky knot there. You can see how sweet that turned out with the imagination down at the bottom. On this page, the only thing in addition to just sticking everything down is this sweet little silk green bow at the bottom. Let's slide the green over and one more. We've got a blue we're going to pick up and slide and we get to go backwards in our instructions. So here we are in layouts three and four. You want to empty the contents of pocket three and four. Not a whole lot in there, it's pretty basic. Sometimes that's kind of nice, right? This page just does a lot for itself. We're gonna begin with this wide strip and then nest it with a gold plane and then the, the border strip that has the arrow on it. Below that, we can add our gold horizontal mats. We have this vertical piece here. If something looks weird on the instructions, there's a piece of ribbon that goes through that. And then beneath that, we'll add the, I have no shelf control. This is a tag that needs the corners clipped. You can do that with scissors or your trimmer. There's another gold mat. I'll place that down at the bottom edge here. I really went around and around as to where I wanted these two little squares, but I'm pretty happy I landed at this spot right here with these gold prints in that spot. And then two vertical photo mats here. This piece ends up over there. This is nested and placed here. I'll show you a little trick with that. And if you take this little torn piece of blue and round the corners, you can put a clip on it. I'm getting down to the bottom of our clip stash. I just think these are the most adorable little things ever. Now you know that. You know how much I love these. And that's going to tuck right behind here. Here's our finished page with uh, the clip right there and a three-part bow wrapped onto this larger mat here, and then badge punch the end of the tag and just tie on a piece of the soft brown ribbon. This was attached to with foam adhesive to kind of make it pop a little bit. On the facing page, nothing special, but one little trick. I took a craft knife and I cut a slit in the base paper enough of a size so that I could slide this piece underneath it. So you see it on the back side there. So that just allows that look of that archway to not be obscured by the placement of that journaling prompt, which I didn't really want to move any further this way. And now I can slide the print, the clock print over to the right, and then I've got the library print moving, and we've arrived at pages one and two. I have some fun things I'm looking forward to sharing with you on this one. Make sure everything's out of all of those pockets. And here we go. Let's get some pieces placed. This title, Books Don't Just Go With You, that starts over here at the top. And I did an illusion making it look like there was a blue mat, but there isn't. It's only the strips next door to the piece, but I think it kind of does add a lot. Let's take two horizontal burgundy pieces. Those are going to go, well, actually, we need to begin with the blue strip here and the text mat. There's a lot of little fitting in this, tweaking. That's why we don't glue anything down until we're sure we know where everything's gonna end up. You should have some smaller taupe pattern pieces that mat right on top of there. 
And there's a longer piece of blue. What I want is for the distance from here to here to allow for this to be placed. So this comes up. So the height of this will be the same and then this will be right below it. There's a, it's gonna frame this just a little bit. I hope that made sense. There's a vertical tag that gets placed here. And our final library card set will go in this lower corner with that small burgundy. And then there should be a little print. Oh yes, here he is. There's the print. Then we have the wonder paired with our book plate and a little torn there's probably a little torn piece of yes we didn't we didn't tear it yet or around a corner so i'm just going to quick take care of it might as well right i just think rounding the corners does something it makes it look more i don't know that gets clipped on that spot and you know this can be inserted either direction depending on if you want that little author title on there and your last paper clip goes there. Continuing with our remaining pieces, we are so close, a vertical here, and then the skinny vertical, which will nest our tag. Three horizontal burgundy mats here. And then you have something peculiar that'll happen. Oh yes. That gets nested there. I forgot, this gets nested onto the burgundy first and then flanked by the blue. Adventure awaits, goes in this spot and the map gets kind of tucked behind there. Now this little piece is peculiar. What are we gonna do with that? Well, I'm going to show you the whole process of finishing this up. So I'm taking this piece and you see how it has the little and I'm going to take a craft knife here and bring my edge of my ruler so that it's an eighth of an inch past that border and cut along that. Then I'll rotate and I'll do it the other direction to sort of re just remove this piece, this little corner piece, this V. So now I have this and I'm going to adhere it to my burgundy strip centered from top to bottom and flush at the left edge. I'll repeat the process. So now I take my ruler again and I'm going one cube from the edge of the piece on both ends. Save this. So now this can go here and we get to see more of the ladder, more of the print. So this title continues down. Books don't just go with you, they take you where you've never been. And you've got this little piece left over, right? So if I take it and tuck it in right there, it looks like this is a little too long. I forgot one little trim. This is supposed to be one and three quarter. Aha, look at that. And this can fit right on top of there just brings the eye and it balances out what's happening below with the reverse of that piece totally rescued from the trash can. Oh, okay, and our final finished appearance here. You can see how this all worked out. Again, the addition of a little bit of wax cord there. And I hole punched the top of the tag and wrapped the ribbon around to the back, secured it with cellophane tape. Then on this page, I punched through this cut apart, turned it into a tag virtually by doing that. And then I could thread the ribbon coming double. So it kind of gives you this first prize sort of a feel or literary award. <laughs> and I mounted this with foam adhesive circles. Clipped on here, we've got this attached. Remember to attach this before you nest anything onto the, the envelope. You don't want to mess around with adding your brads before it's too late, right? So that is layout one and two of Bookworm. I really love this collection. I think it's going to be perfect for some European travel pictures I've taken. In fact, we even toured a stunning library in Prague, I believe, and it'll just be so beautiful with this collection. So while I'm off doing that, I hope you enjoy assembling your pages, putting them all together. And a quick plug, if you're not a member of Club Scrap, please join us. It's an amazing value, a wonderful time. Uh, you'd be a member of a really creative and fun family. We'd love to have you be a part of it. Until next time, happy scrapping.